today. So our favorite little beekeeper, Ashley, is learning some of the basics. Oh, yes! How do you even hey. make that look good? Yeah, there you go. Hey. Okay, no. okay. <laughs> you know, obviously the outfit is also, you know, it's cute, but also I'm loving this outfit because it's warm. It's keeping me warm. But you guys, this is great. Now, Tina, I know this is something you are very much so into. Yes. It is beekeeping season, at least come March. And so we thought we would come out and learn a little something, something for people at home. Um, if you're interested in being a backyard beekeeper, I have here Rachel with me. Rachel with Bee Charmers. I'm going to come on this side of you, Rachel. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing okay. Good. So as you can see, she's the pro. She has no problem <laughs> being a bit more exposed than me. Yeah, they doesn't to be afraid of. Um, if you're keeping bees, you can use a smoker, do your research, and you'll be fully prepared to keep your own backyard hives. Yeah, no, this is so great. Okay, so you are hosting a workshop today in mm -hmm. Davis. People can come. It starts at 10, but what are some of the things that you're going to be teaching people? Yeah, we're going to be talking about how to choose what kind of hive you want, how to talk to your neighbors about your new hobby, how to register your bees with your county, um, how to keep them healthy, um, making sure that you know how to do a hive inspection when we're opening up this top, suiting up, using the smoker, and then the best part, how to process the honey that you can eat and share with your neighbors and friends. I definitely think that's the most important part, but I think we should do a little, we should do a little inspecting. How about that? <laughs> so we have the smoker here, and you told me the smoker is oftentimes just to calm the bees down because they don't want to feel like we're invading their territory. Yeah, it's almost like an invisibility cloak, you could say. Um, you smoke the bees just a bit, and it kind of keeps them from being able to know that there's someone breaking into their house. So it okay. just confuses them for a short period of time, doesn't harm them. Yeah, so you just, you would use the smoker, okay. you smoke the entrance just a little bit, okay. wait a little while, okay. and then you would open the top, smoke there, and then you can start opening the hive and checking out, uh, making sure that your bees are healthy, that there's plenty of babies in there, there's plenty of food, um, there's no disease, and everything looks good uh, for them to survive the whole year, including the winter, which is their hardest time of year. So can we open this up? Can we pop the top? It's a little too cold right now. Oh, it's, too cold. it's too cold. We don't want to chill them. We're going to okay. wait until a little bit later in the day. Okay. Um, but you would just open the top like this, and you take out the frames, and they have lots of bees on them. Um, if you're using your smoker for safety, you don't really have to worry about the bees bothering you as long as you're, you know, treating them gently. Yeah. Um, and not jostling them around. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm curious. Listen, I've had honey from backyards before, but uh -huh. why do you think people love how um, beekeeping from their own backyards? Oh my gosh. I think that it maybe starts with wanting honey, but I think that it leads you to seeing how the bees are pollinating all the different plants in your yard. Um, of seeing like how they behave how they act when you open the hive up you really are seeing all the different little jobs they're doing as a whole um, they're almost like a they're a colony they're almost like a super organism so each of the bees are doing their own special job for the whole to survive and it's a really awesome experience got it so i mean the the season in california is nice it's nice and long from march and if you're lucky all the way through october oh yeah totally we have such a short winter um you know you would you have a really long beekeeping season um, and so you really can be active with your hive all the way from March until sometimes in of October, yeah. Got it. Okay, so now, again, the workshop today starts at 10, but if you can't make it, because I know we're you know, pushing time a little bit, you're having another one in March. Yeah, we have a workshop coming up in March. It's an intermediate workshop. In April, another beginner workshop. And then every other weekend, starting March 10th, we have experiences here for apiary tours where we open the hive up, do a honey tasting, um, tour the farm, and do a little bit of a pollinator hunt and check out some Ooh. other native pollinators that are here on the farm at the camp. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. I'm so bummed out we didn't get a chance to pop the lid, but, you know, I'm no criminal. I just wanted to <laughs> peek inside. I didn't want to completely invade their territory, but it was just too cold to do it. Now, Tina, again, this is something that you love. I know you beekeep from home. Are you, do you have any questions for Rachel? Anybody out there? Questions? Questions from the floor? <laughs> Hello. Just tell her I paid my Saba dues. I already paid them. She paid, she paid her Saba dues. Thank you, Tina. We appreciate membership <laughs> in the Sacramento Area Beekeepers Association. Um, that's a really amazing place to come get a mentor, learn about beekeeping. It's a community of people who are also really passionate about their own backyard hives. So. Yeah. And we like seeing Tina there. Uh, no, Tina's great. Tina, by the way, you haven't brought me any honey. <laughs> honey. Uh -huh. That's because she needs some honey. <laughs> Listen, she's selling it now, okay? <laughs> So, oh, so she's going to charge me. Yeah, you can find oh, it at shoot. Expensive. How you about can, lunch? You can yeah, find it at Cordy Brothers. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you oh. so much. Okay. I'm being